um, like JL, my high school best friend, or since sophomore year, one of them, dear, dear friend, dear, dear person, um, you know, he had been there for me when I had the d depression break. So I was kind of going back to school with a little bit of that, like, embarrassment that I'd had that break. Been through the pages of my old journals with every turn another memory. Hello, and welcome to episode 93 of Journaling Through the Years. I am Leah Liz, and this is a series on this channel wherein I read from my journals that I've been writing in since I was old enough to hold a pencil. What did I say it like that? Uh, check out the bonfire merch. The links are in the description below. Um, sorry about the weird lighting behind me. It's a big bright window right there and it's pretty bright today even though it's overcast and it's just that's a reflection behind me. So it's kind of weird but it's fine. <sighs> Calm down. <laughs> So the links are in the description below, the merch, uh, as well as the link to my Patreon and the link to my website. So uh, check those out. You can find out about the Patreon. You get to be part of the Discord channel with other patrons, the Facebook chat, or if there's a Facebook group that's private, um, access to content early, like this one, but even more uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, access to purchase tickets to events and I think for my featured artist events I'm gonna do something for the patrons that or for the people that are else elsewhere that they can purchase a ticket and see it virtually like we'll set up the computer and have like a zoom or something where they can kind of zoom in and watch the event in some capacity yeah I don't I'm thinking about that but yeah that's stuff like that. Check out the Patreon. Here we go. Oh, before this, last week we were talking about camp. And in this, there's a whole, like, there's a bunch of, um, like, like, notes from a campfire at camp. Um, there was, every night there was a campfire. And um, it was just basically, like, the skits at the end of the night you'd have dinner and like chill for a little bit and then you go to campfire and it was like a kind of an amphitheater and there's a little stage and a little fireplace <laughs> and you'd light the fire you dedicate it the campfire or something and then you had like things you did you had to do the Y chant you're the Y Y M C A Y M C A you know that whole thing and like you know the they did you can't come up with little fun skits and songs and stuff and blah. <laughs> nah. um and so we had sat down the silts and were designing things um for like to, writing down uh skit ideas one of them was called all my campers a soap opera there's also talk show idea oh. We are scattered about now. So this is a, about, I think this is in the school year now. <laughs> and I'm writing about camp and camp friends. Because um, by this time, like, coming back to school, junior year, I couldn't, I didn't really want to hang out with my so-called so best friend. Bad A had run away, so I really didn't have a lot of friends. And I was going into the new year, the new, my junior year of high school with not a lot of friends that I knew of. And then also those that were aware, um, like JL, my high school best friend, or since sophomore year, one of them, dear, dear friend, dear, dear person. Um, you know, he, he had been there for me when I had the d depression break. So I was kind of going back to school with a little bit of that like embarrassment that I'd had that break. I, not a lot of people knew but those who knew knew and then also that kind of like drama that I was you know I didn't have the friends anymore because I didn't want to hang out with my so-called best friend because I was hurting and so I felt like oh god I'm going into this kind of being a loner um it wasn't that bad so looking at camp I was like these are my only friends not any like I don't have anyone here 
Um, and in reality, I find when I think about my high school class or my classmates growing up, I went to a very small school. There was only about 36 of us in the graduating class and in the whole graduating from high school, there was like 120 kids in the high school and middle school combined. And my class, the majority of us had known each other since preschool or before <laughs> this preschool. And when you grow up with someone, I mean, that's like family in a sense. And you grow up seeing someone day in, day out. You don't necessarily see any changes. I think I took them for granted. I think they took me for granted because we were just like, we just knew each other so well and had so much like so much <laughs> and so many memories and um and we had our own little culture we were kind of um i wouldn't say the troubled class we are intelligent we are like super super smart like they had to invent ap classes for the majority of us because we would get bored and then we'd get in trouble not so much me but i'm saying we collective because <laughs> I had to, like, sometimes I got in trouble with them, even though I didn't any, do anything. They were just like, that class, play like, they did, like, this certain, they did it. So the whole class has to go and be, like, in trouble now. <laughs> but so, like, it was, like, stuff like that, that you would get kind of tired of each other. You take each other for granted because you saw each other every day. Now, looking back, I was... I was closer, I am closer to, I know the people I went to school with better and more intimately than maybe the friends I went to camp with, but the camp friends are special because we were in a setting that put, took us out of our environment and put us in a place where it was like, this is unconditional love. And you can be yourself here and you're going to be accepted. And it's only this like moment in time for two weeks every summer for three summers or whatever it is. And so that, that that's a dichotomy there. So there is a sense of knowing, you know, I'm writing, I, I wrote and I'm about to film in the spring, this film called One Day, where these two women meet and go on this epic hike. And then basically, we don't know if they'll ever see each other again, but they always carry it with them that moment. And I think that, um, so there is something to be said about those, like, once in a lifetime or, or, um, those meetups that you have with somebody that it's so special and unique. And then as opposed to those day in, day out. And I think sometimes we take for granted the day in, day out because there's something mystical about those moments and times, friendships. But they're both valuable. And they both shape us and shape me. They both shaped me who I am today and helped me stay alive. <laughs> we are scattered about now, like the ripples of the water. When a stone is tossed upon them, burk, uh, burk, far apart from each other. I know that it has been to, I know that it has to be this way in order to survive. We need to move around, change our habitat. Okay, so I'm writing this like, like we had to leave camp. Like it wasn't just it was over and it was time to go back to school in the fall. It was like, no, we had to leave because of like, like, like war. <laughs> in order to survive, we had to move around, change our habitat. Still, it hurts. Of course it would hurt if it was the drastic and drama of it all. Yeah, but it's also still it hurts. I mean, life life moves us forward and, and we look back and have, like, memory f for what's past. But life moves us forward. And it is, I mean, here I am reading these journals from my past that some people would say, just move on. But I feel like looking back is moving forward. Looking back can be a step forward. By looking back and kind of healing and working through and healing, we won't repeat our past in a negative way. 
I feel I can release by looking back, healing and unwinding and releasing. I step forward and I don't repeat the past mistakes over and over again. I heal and I move on. Still it hurts and I long for your golden beauty. Your golden beauty, your rosy cheeks, your deep blue eyes. Still I'm glad that we were together for the time we had. We were meant to be together. We did what we had to do, came together and formed a chain. A chain! <laughs> what a chain! A link to our future. Aw, that's cute. Now the rock has been thrown into the calm waters. We are scattered apart. I sit by myself in a room with bare walls. Where the hell am I? <laughs> in a room with bare walls. They don't trust me. It's like a padded room. No. Waiting for something to happen. Thinking of you as the moments fly by. We had to move on, yet my heart slowly breaks. Piece after piece crumple away, dripping down to the pit of my stomach. God, now I'm going to be sick. A tear trickles from my eye. Okay, so the interesting thing is, at this point with my... Co I, um, it's interesting. I, I, I'm like, I feel like in this description of... Um, I lost my place. Hold on. Let me get there. Uh, 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 and I long for your golden beauty, your rosy cheeks, deep blue eyes. I, I think I'm describing the different friends I knew from camp. Uh, there's not, It's not just one person. I think it's like a description of like my my understanding. Like uh, T, I think, was the golden beauty. Um, I don't know who had the deep blue eyes, the rosy cheeks. <laughs> but like, yeah, the, I'm describing certain individuals um, from camp. Um Okay, what's interesting, it's interesting about immediate past and then past, like way distant past. When I was writing this, it was just immediate past. It was probably like a month or two, but like September, October, early October, and camp was August. And we're probably going to see each other like in a few weeks at um, a, a, a camp that I went to called Pacific Regional Camp that was like for high schoolers after Thanksgiving. <laughs> So it wasn't like we were going to see each other, but that's the thing is like, and we, for the majority of us were living within the like same County. We went to different high schools. We were in different towns, but we were in the same County. We were, we could, they, there wasn't really internet at the time. There's a little bit of chat room, but not, not really. We had, um, portable phones and letters and I don't even know if we really had email. It was just like 94, 95, 96. It wasn't as a thing. It was mostly still phone calls and that was expensive. That was called long distance. <laughs> we charge extra just to call two cities over. But what I'm saying is that we were still pretty close and we're still within the same sort of like region. There were some that were farther down like in the Bay Area, like around San Francisco, about an hour or so away. And that was like a special treat to go down there. But, but to go down there for that drive, like, but still it was looking back, like now it's somewhat more reasonable than what we thought and felt back then. People were a lot more disconnected or isolated. Like we weren't as connected as we are today um, in me with immediate connection, number one. And number two... I think when you're younger and you don't have a car, you don't know how to, you don't, you can't drive as easily. You can't get from place to place. There was more of that distance. Um, but what's interesting now, looking back on that, kind of reading this today in the sense that we actually all have scattered apart. We all are living our lives as grownups and adults and it's amazing and we're all kicking butt, kicking ass, right? Killing it all that um that chain that we formed as kids growing up at camp and then even i would say this about my high school class it is a link to our future that i feel like there will always be a connection always be a link to one another and that our love that we gave each other or the love that they gave me in those early formidable days of my youth um have kept me alive and have reminded me, even if I've never been able to see it or forgotten it, 
for whatever reason, because of abusive people in my life, I've always felt that love. And I've always believed that I'm worthy of love because of this love, this link from my past to my future, reminding me that I matter and that my life matters and that I am loved and I am worthy of love. And like that, I say, you matter, your life matters, you are loved, and you are worthy of love. And always remember to love your thrive and find your sunshine.